Good afternoon, Year 4. We're going to read Chapter 2 of The Sheep Pig. And it is called, There Is That Nice. In the farmyard, Fly and Black and White Collie were beginning the training of her four puppies. For some time now, they had shown an ins ins instinct and interest to anything that moved, driving it away or bringing it back, turning it to left or right, in fact, herding it. They had begun with such things as passing beetles. They were now ready, fly, considering, for larger creatures. She set them a word on Miss Hoggart's ducks. Already the puppies were beginning to move, as sheepdogs do, seeming to creep rather than walk. Heads held low, ears pricked, eyes fixed on the angrily quacking birds as they manoeuvred them about the yard. Good boys, said Fly. Leave them now. Here comes the boss. The ducks went grumbling off to the pond, and the five dogs watched as Farmer Hoggart got out of the Land Rover. He lifted something out of the crate in the back. He carried it into the stables. What was that, Mum? said one of the puppies. Animal standing all by itself in the middle of the roomy loose box touched Fly's soft heart. Already she was sorry that she had said the pigs were stupid. For well, this one certainly did not appear to, to be so. Also, there was something <clears throat> dignified about the way it stood its ground. In the strange place, confronted with strange animals, how different from the silly sheep, who are the mere sight of a dog would run aimlessly about crying. Wolf, wolf in the empty-headed way. Ha! Huh, she said. Who are you? I'm a large white, said the piglet. Blimey, said one of the puppies. Is that a large white? What's a small one like? And they all, on all four, sniggered. Be quiet, snapped Fly. Just remember that five minutes ago you didn't even know what a pig was. And to the piglet, she said kindly, I expected that. That's your breed, dear. I meant. What's your name? I don't know, said Piglet. Well, what's your mother call you? To tell you apart from your brothers and sisters, said said Fly, and then wished she hadn't. For the mention of his family, the Piglet began to look distinctly unhappy. His little forehead wrinkled, and he gulped, and his voice trembled as he answered. She called us all the same. And what was that, dear? Babe, said the Piglet. And the puppies began to giggle until their mother silenced them with a growl. But that's a lovely name, she said. Would you like us to call you that? It will make you feel more at home. At last, word of the little pig's face fell even further. I want my mum, he said quietly. And the and that instant, the collie bitch made her mind and she would foster this unhappy child go out into the yard and play she said to the puppies and she climbed to the top of the straw stack and jumped over the raw over the rail and down into the loose box beside the piglet listen babe she said you've got to be a brave boy everyone has to leave their mother it's all part of growing up i did so even when I was your age, and my puppies will have to leave me quite soon. But I'll look after you, if you all like. Then she licked as his little snout with her warm, rough tongue, her plumed tail wagging. There, is that nice, she said. A little while later, Farmer Hoggart came into the stables with his wife to show her his prize, they looked over the loose box straw and saw, to their astonishment, Fly curled around the piglet. Exhausted by the drama of the day, he lay fast asleep against his new-found foster parent. Well, will you look at that, said Mrs. Hoggart. That's old Fly. She'll mother anything, kittens, ducklings, baby chicks, and she's looked after all all day now tis a pig 
isn't he lovely? What a picture. Good job. He don't know where he'll finish up, but he'll be big and then we'll be glad to see the back of him. Or his, <clears throat> or his hams, I should say. Shan't us wonder how I shall get it all in the freezer. Pity, really, said Farmer Hoggart absently. Mrs Hoggart went back to her kitchen, shaking her head all the way across the yard at the thought of her husband's soft-heartedness. The farmer opened the loose box door and, to save the effort of the word, clicked his fingers to call the bitch out. As soon as Fly moved, the piglet woke and followed her, sticking so close to that she snouted, touching her tail up. Surprise forced Farmer Piglet into speech. Fly, he said um, in amazement, obediently as always. The collie bitch turned and trotted back to him. The pig trotted behind her. Sit, said Farmer Hogger. Fly sat. Babe said. Babe sat. Farmer Hogger scratched his head. He could not think of anything to say. I hope you enjoyed chapter two, guys. I hope you will join me for next story time. Thank you. Bye-bye.